guys. Welcome back. Welcome back, Patriots. Look, I just got some of my own designs in. I got this shirt in. It's chemtrails are not a conspiracy theory. I really like this design. It gets people aware of the uh, geoengineering. Also got this one here in. It's the, uh, you know, they form something called the government. They're here to help. They want half of everything we own. And then we got the con news uh, on which, as you know, we are, right? Now for some more shit we made up to socially engineer you ignorant fuckers. So if you'd like to get them, these are really good uh, t-shirts. They're very soft. You can get the extra soft, which I like. Uh, very comfortable, good quality. The designs last a long time. I, I put them through a hundred washings and they're still there. So uh, if you would, go to my shop at, at uh, Threadless, that's badass, Uncle Sam, threadless.com and, and get yourself a, one of these designs. Uh, now the, the video we got coming up here is a, um, well, it's a, a, a priest that I read, a Catholic priest I talked to, who, <laughs> pretty hip dude. Uh, I cut out a lot of this at his request because he said some things that were, that could have been confused, that might have gotten him in trouble, pertaining to the persecution of the church and why uh, the Muslims or even the Jewish community is not receiving the same kind of persecution. So I cut that out at his request. But, uh, and I don't know why, I think it's pretty much common knowledge that that, that is going on. But a pretty hip dude. Uh, the second lady uh, that comes up is actually a young woman who's a professor in theology and one of her students, uh, who's also a Catholic. Now, uh, uh, both of them, uh, both the priest and the, uh, the professor, uh, uh, defended the current pope. I don't know how they can do that, but they did. I guess it's just a matter of you know, them staying with the faith. Uh, the reasons they give, or I don't know, they, they, you, well, you can judge for yourself whether they're valid or not. Uh, either or, it's good conversations. And, uh, you know, if you like it, you know what you do, you hit the like button, and if you uh, care, you share. And if you can, you can contribute. Now, I do have a new subscribe page, uh, or subscription page, uh, or uh, it's called Subscribe Star. It's gonna, I wanted to take the place of the Patreon, uh, which I'm going to replace on my website, which I haven't done yet, but you will be in the description. Subscribe Star, Badass Uncle Sam. You got different tiers you can contribute out. If you're a regular uh, viewer of my uh, videos, I would ask that if you would please, if you can, um, give uh, five bucks a month minimum to uh, sustain me through the times when I can't get out, like on the past weekend when it rained throughout the weekend. And I wasn't able to get it out at all. It puts a big hole in my, in my uh, income uh, and my ability to, you know, to keep this going. So if I have some subscribers, I can uh, get me past those times. Of course, I can, if I can get enough patrons, then, of course, I can actually start expanding on this and doing even more uh, more things with it. So if you can, please uh, uh, see your way to go help. It would help out a great deal. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe and keep on hitting that subscribe button because they are, as you know, purging anybody right of center right now. And so they are knocking off subscribers on a regular basis. So you have to keep on resubscribing and please share these videos so we can, I can gain new subscribers uh, along the way. We can fight this censorship together. So I want to thank all of you that have been with me a long time. I want to thank the new people that have come on board with me. I'm going to be out there for as long as you give me the support to do that. So God bless you, and let's get on the streets. Hey, look at that. Look at this. Pedophile pizza. Yeah. You must get a lot of, you get a lot of people giving you a hard time? Crazy. Do you? 
They're afraid to. They're afraid to. They're mostly they're cowards. Together, yes, right? they are. They're, they're, great, they're great in a mob, but, yeah. but ultimately they're... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. No, but I, 98%. They yeah. talk... You know what what's, what, what amazes me? I walk into a break because I, I don't look like a... I don't look like oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Freaking, yeah. You know, but it's funny, you know? Yeah. You play them. You play them. They, you know, they start talking. They'll, they'll start talking shit about whatever. Tra- they assume right. that you're a freaking. That you think everybody thinks like they do. Right. And that's why Trump won. Yes. Yeah. You got it. You got it. So what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, actually, I'm a musician. I'm yeah, a you, musician, you, and I'm a. Catholic. That would have been my first guess. What do you play? I play the Hammond organ, you know that? Really? Yeah. yeah. Hammond organ. And well, my Hammond. claim to fame, I was the last percussionist for James Booker. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Last percussionist for James Booker. Well, that is uh, pretty the interesting. The Hammond organ, you don't find to me. I think, damn, that's... Well, there's one in, uh, there's a house with one in B.B. Uh, King's. I was just seeing it. Terrific. You know? Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm actually down here looking to, looking to play in June. Cool. Hoping to play... Uh, many places as I can. I don't know, see what God provides, and you know. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So. Yeah, it's fun playing them. As I, I mean, you know, I, I imagine you have a good time with that. Well, uh, to be honest with you, there's another thing that I do that I, I haven't told you about, but uh, believe it or not, I'm also a Catholic priest. Oh, wow. So, you know, I have a couple of uh, hidden, uh, you know, Identities here. Indeed, you, know you do. Yeah, but but in his, and even in the even in the church. I mean, like I was in uh, I was serving in uh, the Bahamas, or no, well, I want to say I want to say it was in the Bahamas. It was in uh, there was this archbishop. I was over his house for dinner, and he already he spoke to me, and he he said, you know, he said that the bishops in the United States. I'm Catholic. I'm not Catholic or not, but, but uh, you know, Christian. Well. That they were just, they couldn't believe the fact that Trump had liked it. You know, I mean, this is like a lot of people who call themselves Christians, you know, they, 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 they're, they're, they, they don't like Trump either. Huh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they just assume that, and it's, it's a, that's why, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a lot going on in the Catholic Church right now. I mean, look, man, the same, the same kind of that they're throwing at, at Trump, they're throwing at us. Okay? What do you think? That, that all Catholic priests are freaking perverts? They're not. They're not. Of course not. We're under the Oh, time. no kidding. Big time. We're well, under- you, well, excuse me, what is it? Two two churches a day getting burnt or attacked in, in France right now. Not Notre Dame being Muslims. I think it's Muslims. Muslims are hate. Yes. Yeah, Muslims. I'm saying, oh, dude, I don't think it's a coincidence. It start a holy week and then that no, thing catches yeah. fire? Come on, man. What, a candle fell over? No. Yeah, give me a break. It's insane. It's insane. Satan's like on the, you know, like taking over. Well, you know, there's, there's, there's forces at play here. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what the, the forces at play are. Yeah. No, well, look, look, look. You know, you see here. Yes. You know, the proxy warriors. Yeah. They make the proxy warriors of, of the oligarchs. The marshal, they are usually, you know, the homosexuals. You know, Lori Goodstein from the New York Times. She oh, yeah. vilifies the church every chance she gets. Every chance she gets. And then look what the Dems have running that, that mayor who's proudly to be gay. He's that, having... that guy? What oh the hell? Oh my gosh. Oh I mean, God. Jesus, what the... I mean, he's just... That, that guy, you know who's cut the same people who brought you Obama? Yeah. Is bringing this one. Yeah. Yeah. Brought you Obama. I know. I know. They right? keep on pushing Axel that envelope. Axelrod and his cronies. They keep on pushing that envelope out there. They keep on pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. But it's, I, I see a push back. I mean, you know, there's a, it's a bridge too far that they're going. That's right. There's a, and people are going to get fed up with that shit. Well, they are. They don't want to jam down their throat anymore. Infanticide? I mean, I know a lot of liberals that are going, no, 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 I can't go there. They, they believe in abortion, but they don't want, they don't the devils, infanticide is too far. Yes, it is. I have to say it. I, I, no, I mean, these people right. are basically in yes. league with the devil. Yes, they, are. they ain't going to realize it. People ain't going to realize it until it's, you know, it's paganism. We're in a neo-pagan yes, environment and, you know, yes, all of the old, the things are not... Well, New Orleans is nothing else one of the epicenters for paganism. Is it? Are you kidding me? Really? But Mardi Gras alone is paganism. Is it? 
I mean, if you walk around and look at the at the architecture here, you will see just pagan people all over the place. Like what? What do you mean? What? All over like the place. Just I mean, kind of like voodoo witchcraft. Oh, shit. we got yeah, we got voodoo here. We've got. I mean, this is. Uh, How, do you live here? Oh yeah. How long have you been here for? Oh, uh, long enough to get this tick. Wow. <laughs> over forty years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But there, yeah, this place is an epicenter for uh, a lot of the Illuminati. They have the kill. Are you serious? Oh yeah. Yeah. Podesta's uh, brother has an art gallery here. Who? Podesta. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that creep. Yeah. Oh my god. No, this place. I mean, this. This is where this is their adult Disneyland. They keep this place as one of their places to come to do to do their pervy shit. Yes, to Are do all serious, their pervy man? stuff. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, this is the adult Disneyland for them right here. I gotta give you a donation. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a uh, if you can. I want to give you one of my. Uh, oh yeah. One of my CDs. Oh God, bless. my Thanks. number. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I wrote this CD. It's a jazz CD. I'm a jazz organist. You know, so Terrific. I'm looking for a. Uh, I wrote this in, in honor of, for, uh, gift, you know, the gift of the Catholic priesthood because we're, we're under the gun, and I don't really no proclaim kidding. to the fact that I'm a I'm a priest that let the music stand for itself. But um, you know, if you if you if you run across anybody that, or if you listen to it and you think that hey, you know what, this guy could, I, I, I I'm I'm ready to do it. And it's uh, let me tell you something. I'm I'm, I'm I, I'll say this objectively without boasting and that's how what you go by sanjo yeah this is sanjo yeah sanjo records a mango, mango hill, hill records, records in miami miami yeah it's so proper there we go what's that i'm recording all this oh are you really <laughs> yeah okay so it was right after uh i told him i was recording that he asked me not to air uh, a video and I I'm reneging on that I, I, but as I said I I I edited out a lot of what I thought he uh, might not want to be heard uh, that might get him in trouble so the stuff I left in I don't think was controversial at all to get him in trouble and I don't know if you're watching this video and you want me to take your take it down, I'll do it, but I think you're okay with it. Besides, I'm helping promote your music. Um, yeah, but I'm sorry we didn't get, I didn't get to air the rest of our conversation because we went on and he went into a great deal about the Pope and how he felt about him, uh, which, oddly enough, this young lady that is about to come up echoes. So whatever he said is primarily what this lady says. So uh, you get you know you can judge for yourself. I personally am not a you know their defense of the this current pope. I wasn't. I couldn't really. Uh, I couldn't really champion. So uh, I don't think. I think he is a sellout. Uh, there are of course the the people who say that he is the last pope. And um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? God only knows. And of course, God, if you're listening, it's in your hands. So here we go. Let's get to it. Thank you very much. I lost my Make America Great Again hat. Would you be seen with me if I bought a Make America Great Again hat? <laughs> so how do you deal? So you're obviously conservative then? Or? Yeah, I mean, I'm a registered Republican, but I don't. I voted for Donald Trump. I don't like love what's been happening with certain things, but I try to like the more like pro-life um, kind of like uh, conservative right wing. Yeah, because I mean, it, typically academia is very yeah. liberal. Yeah. yeah, I think being Catholic has like I I was raised in a very conservative household, and the world is largely very liberal. Um, but I was raised Republican, and my my dad's Republican, and. Um, I'm more Catholic, like I, I would take the teachings of the church before I would take like the Republican side, but I definitely like swing more right. I had a great conversation last week with a Catholic priest Ooh. who you would never know was a Catholic priest when he walked up. Really? Yeah, because he was very uh, bohemian looking. Okay, okay. You know, a uh, musician, he plays the organ, oh. and he gave me one of his oh, albums cool. and stuff. 
and uh, we talk quite a bit about you know what's going on with the Catholic Church yeah, yeah, and, and yeah I mean uh, what do you plan on doing with your with your uh, uh, education and yeah speaking hopefully but we shall see as every theology every major theology hopes major. for now there's so much going on in the Catholic Church right now yeah there is the Pope seems how do you feel about the current Pope um I mean like I'm Catholic and so I stand behind our Pope um and I know that he does so many good things for the church and I think that because I think two things I think that because his English is very poor his speech translations the there there are a lot of errors in the inflection of what he says so he actually comes off being far more liberal than he actually is um, a lot of things that he says that give me pause I have to kind of like go back and be like okay like that's probably not actually like how he meant it and what he said um, I loved Pope Benedict I had my conversion during Pope Benedict I was like a JP2 lover like I, I think that Pope Francis gets a lot I think that people think he's a lot more liberal and that he's going to change the church teaching which he can't do because the church is the church like it can't be changed um, but I think because his English is so bad the translations of his speeches like just get him in trouble because he's not he's also not the brightest and he'll admit that too he's far more pastoral than he is intellectual versus Benedict was a lot more intellectual than he was pastoral um, but I think the Pope Francis is doing a lot of good for people who aren't Catholic I think the people who aren't Catholic really listen to him and hear him and hear what the church is trying to say I think it's the practicing Catholics that have a harder time with his uh, kind of looser lingo. It's very... It's because uh, you're mirroring pretty much what the priest said to me. I yeah, yeah. It's because yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. know, like you say, the how he comes off and how the media portrays him in a lot of times yeah. is that he's extremely liberal and he's a globalist and he's, yeah. you know, he's... Yeah. And that's how I was looking at him. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going, this, well, this guy seems like he sounds like a globalist. Yeah. And he's the open borders, he's into, you know, allowing... But he's also seemed to be very open to Islam. Now, yeah. how, what, how do you, what is your view on the conflict or the what's going on with Islam right now in oh. the Catholic Church? Because, I mean, yeah. you know, Notre Dame, of course, caught fire. I don't think that was an accident. I don't think it was either. Uh, uh, the, a lot of churches are getting attacked. Yeah, Sri Lanka. Uh, you know, Christianity as a whole is under great attack. I mean, yeah. you know, so there's a lot of stress. And Islam seems to be getting more militant. Yeah, yeah. Am I wrong here? Or um, is it? No, I don't think so. I think it's a hard line of the, 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 the one issue that I do have with Pope Francis is that I don't think he's and, and it's not even really an issue. I just don't think he's as, as smart as some of our past popes. Like, he's not very fast to act. And with this with this um, increased conflict with with the Islamic religion like he needs to be faster and he's old so like I get it like it's hard and his English is not good and if his English isn't good like English is like the easiest language to learn like of course like you know whatever languages they're speaking in the Middle East are not going to be easy for a Spanish speaking Pope either but also he's just like he's not fast enough and it's catching up to us and it doesn't help that the American political system is also turning in on itself. Like if we had, like back in like with Ronald Reagan, when the church and the state were like kind of in some kind of something, like we're now more worried about overthrowing our own president than we are concerned with real problems like the conflict. I mean, and this isn't a new conflict, it goes back to the Crusades, right? Like it goes all the way back and back and back and this is just something that we have to continually have to deal with because fundamentally the religion of Islam is a, is a religion of violence. Like they obey a God who tells them to kill people and the Catholics do not obey a God who tells them to commit evil. And that is like a fundamental difference that like as you can be as pastoral as you want, but you can't, like you can't condone evil. Like I would never sit there and say, yeah, like that person, you should go kill them because God said so. And like I don't think, I don't necessarily think that Pope Francis is fast enough to get there. Like he's just not, he's not forceful enough. He's too, 
like he's just too pastoral, like he's too soft, and and that's good. Like that, like Benedict was not soft enough. Benedict was very harsh. He was very military. He was very, you know, one, two, three, systematic. But he was really, really smart. So he saw a lot of these things. Actually, uh, they just recently found evidence that Pope Benedict actually had predicted the sexual abuse crisis that's happening right now. He had put together all of the paperwork for Pope Francis and was already in the process of like uncovering all those things because he's so smart that his brain is just going ahead of everything. Francis is still trying to play catch up, and I don't think that he has the intellectual capabilities to catch up any faster, and I think that's catching up to us a little bit. I mean, because they even, I mean, it was just about a year ago or so that they actually busted an orgy in the Vatican. Yeah, yeah, yep. Which is like... And it's like, it's like, you have to think, for people who don't, people, people also like to, like, talk who don't really know, like, they don't really read and they don't really know, they just like to say, oh, screw the priests, they're all pedophiles, you know, but, like, the, the, the Vatican is so enormous that I'm not even sure that Pope Francis would have even known that those side relations were necessarily happening. I'm not saying that he didn't know, but I do think the action that's being taken now needs to take precedent over whatever issues are happening in now, there are those that expound the the uh, proposition theory that the church is being infiltrated and taken over by Satan or Satan's agents themselves. Yeah. Because, you know, they... Yeah. They've been saying that for years. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, is it no truth to that? I, I mean, mean I would think that all religions are, you know, I mean, even the Bible does not preach about, you know, the false prophets and the, you know, like the yeah. ones that come in. and. Yeah. and and even when it gets into the political aspect of it, how? Because you really can't separate no, the church and the state. We, from we like power. to think that we can, but we can't. No, 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 no. They, 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 you know, and I, I believe that a lot of the powers that be you are using Islam now to wreck a lot of right, yeah. like, like you know. Yeah. You know to uh, bring down, to hurt Western civilization, hurt the church. Yeah, yeah. Are you seeing that also? Um, I think I think that people right now are looking to kick the church while she's down. You know, like they're like it took a hit, so let's keep kicking. Um, this is not the first scandal. This won't be the last scandal. This is not the first persecution. This won't be the last. Like Satan is always ready to get at whatever the Lord is working in. So if God's working in your life, you better believe that the devil is going to worm his way in. But don't you also see a pushback in the sense like what? Because most, I mean, even people that are not into it recognize that we're heading towards a precipice. Yeah. An end time of some kind, a, a event horizon. So, I mean, we call it the end times. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm hesitant to fall into that because the Bible says we will know not the day nor the hour. But the Bible also says that you'll see the signs. There, you'll see the signs. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. Like, speculative theology is something that I, that where I was educated at, we were always told, like, like, stay away from speculative theology because it's not based in any kind of truth. And it's not even based in any kind of faith because I'm not going to have faith that the end times are coming right now because I don't, like, actually know that that's happening. I just, like, I think, like, where we're called to be is, like, in the here and now of, like, how can I, as a religious leader within the church, like, how can I serve the church and kind of try to make my mark on the goodness of the Lord in spite of all of these things that people are seeing? Because when you say the Catholic Church, now everybody thinks of bad priests, sex abuse, but I, I want them to think of the Eucharist, you know, forming forming the children, like, going to Mass, the beauty of the church, like, I don't want people to necessarily just jump to the evils, uh, and that's really kind of where I try to be right now, rather than, like, speculating about what's... Yeah, well, I see the correlation in a sense, because I'm looking at, uh, in the secular sense of it, is looking at the the numbers, just if you just look at the numbers, the sustainability of things, yeah. how resources and population yeah. and, yeah. you know, political, how there seems to be like a lot of trains heading towards the same, yep. right, yep. which, yeah. you know, would fit in with a lot of the speculation or the, you know, with the end times of the prophecies sure. that you lead into. Sure. So they seem to be parallel in that sense you know they, yeah. like, there is a even if you weren't religious you'd have to look at some of the uh, just 
know, look at the numbers and I, go, yeah. well, you know, this, we can't keep on going like this. Eventually, the center will not hold. Yeah, so. I don't know that I, like, go there, though, because of, like, think about how many times in history it was worse. Like, how many people thought that after World War One? How many people thought that after World War II? The II? only difference is this, though, because now we have, of course, this aspect. But when you think of the singularity of things and how, I mean, wait, like this right here, I mean, we already know it's going to put 50% of the people out of work in the next 10 years. Sure. So replacing these people, how? what do you do with all these out-of-work people? I mean, look, people aren't just going to learn how to do something else overnight, and what do they do? You're not going to put them in a room playing video games and, you know, and give them a, you know, a, 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 a yearly income just to sit around and play video games. I mean, I don't necessarily think that that is going to be as radical as quickly as we think it is. I think that people are going to, I think that it's going to boom, right? And then it's going to settle back down. I do not think that artificial intelligence is going to replace enough people for them to be so displaced. Well, then you got then you got things like uh, well, the futures, like Ray Kurzweil, yeah, yeah, and all these guys yeah, who say, you know, yeah. we're going to merge with machines and yeah. computers. And, and I've talked to enough programs about people that work for DARPA to find out that yeah. they are working on that stuff. Yeah, they are, but they have they also like have been working on these things. Like I don't, I mean, I'm not even convinced that in my lifetime I'll see a trans. I mean, I'm only 24, almost almost 25. I I don't even think in my lifetime I'll see a total takeover of artificial intelligence just because of how long, if, if you follow the statistical trends of how long they've been working on these things to how many things are actually replacing jobs, it's just not big enough of a trend to actually see. Well, then we do have that, you know, the, 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 it's, I think it's called the Wilson uh, uh, aspect where, you know, things double and double and double and double. Yeah. So they double, double, double. So you get that like, you know, when we yeah. for a long time we were doing this, and we hit the industrial revolution, and now we're then we yeah. oh, boom, boom. And there so, will always be the next thing. Like there's always going to be. Yeah, the but next it's thing moving this come. fast. I mean, we never moved this fast before. Man has a period of adjustment. Yeah. Now we're moving at such rapid speed yeah. where you buy you know buy an iPhone, it's old before you get home. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like you know, so that yeah. the technology seems to be taken over to a point where it's rapid, things are becoming more rapid. So, and you know, we can drive all these cars, and you know, all these drones. So things seem to be moving faster in that aspect. The fact that we are depleting the soil, we are depleting the oceans, that, you know, will we have enough to feed the people that, you know, in the future, in the near future? I mean, we don't even have enough, like, we have enough food to feed the people now, but it's not even, like, distributed. But that's being mismanaged. I mean, yeah. if we manage the resources yeah. properly, yeah. we could sustain another, yeah. you know, several billion people. Well, that there. concept is the ticket of the ticket of solving that issue. If you can, Hopefully. if you can manage. But then on the flip side of that, we got the people that are, are you know, in control the Uber elites. Yeah. Who, uh, I mean, you are you familiar with Agenda 21 and Agenda yeah. 2030? Yeah. So yeah. you know that they're. And, and of course the Georgia Guidestone. Yeah. So, you, yeah. so you know the idea of reducing the world's population to 500 million yeah. by 2030. My dad always talks about that when I say I want to have eight kids. He's like, you're feeding into overpopulation. Like, well, it's not. You know, I mean, we as I said, we could sustain it, but the, yeah. the elites, they're scared of having too many free thinking minded people running around especially if they're prosperous because then we start going what do we need them for well we don't i mean and that's the and that is the beauty i think of um, and i think we do have to get going soon but i think that's really like the beauty of the faith and where having faith in a higher power really allows you to plant yourself in the here and now of everything is working in God's time. Everything is everything has a plan and he's allowing us to be smart enough to produce things like this to only to only further our quality of life and then give that back to him. So I I don't fear my purpose because I know that I will always have one because there's just no way that something that's artificial, without a soul, without a brain, without a intellect, can really have the same level of 
pull on a society that we as human people can. And I think that we'll chase it in a circle until we He's find a it. Great teacher. God bless you. Thank you. you. Thank you. It was a pleasure, yeah, pleasure, nice pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Yeah, it was, it was nice worth, to meet you. One of the best conversations I've had in a long time. Uh, awesome. So I really appreciate it. Here's What's a, your name? Uh, it's a bit badass, Uncle Sam. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a get out of jail free card from Hillary Clinton for you. And good for any crime in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I hate her, but I don't hate her. She's a child of God. I, uh, I know, but uh, it'd be nice to maybe see her. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, have a good it was day. Nice to meet you. Bye. Ah, uh, so God only knows, huh? It's in your hands, God. Well, folks, if you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you uh, care, of course, you share. And then uh, subscribe. And then hit the subscribe button again, because you know what they do. So I want to thank you all. Remember, go to my shop, get one of my new, get one of my designs, and help me out. And then get subscribe star, uh, badass Uncle Sam, and uh, sign up as a patron. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you on the streets.